Rebecca. So it's now showing that the meeting is now live streaming um, on customer live streaming services. So on that basis, and I think you can commence unless Kelly tells me otherwise. Yeah, we're fine. I confirm we're now live. Thank you. Oh, can I just welcome everybody to this audit committee today? And I'd like to move to explain how this meeting is going to work. During the meeting, all microphones and cameras will be switched off, with the exception of myself and any presenting officer, other than indicated by the meeting facilitator. If anyone leave the meeting for any reason, the meeting will continue unless it no, it's no longer quorum. Please ensure that any item relating to personal, private and confidential or exempt information are not visible through your camera or screen sharing until the press and public have been excluded from the meetings. Please be advised that all the proceedings of this meeting will be recorded and broadcast on YouTube Live for members of the public to see. Please ensure that when you are not speaking, your microphone remains on mute and your cameras is switched off. If you wish to speak at any point, please turn on your camera and raise your hand or alternatively indicate via the chat function. The meeting facilitator will then unmute your microphone and invite you to speak at the appropriate time. You should then click to confirm that you wish to unmute your microphone and then state your questions or comments. Please do not try and unmute yourself. The meeting facilitator will do this for you and there will be a slight delay. Then you will be prompted to allow yourself to unmute. Please select the blue button that says unmute now to do so. When I request that all to approve and note the items, I will ask you to turn on your camera and the meeting facilitator will then unmute everyone. If you have any issues with this, is your opportunity to raise them. Silence will be taken as approval. And I now confirm that the following members are in attendance uh, and can be heard and can hear. Councillor Edna Finneran. Can you hear me, Edna? Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Councillor Lisa Preston. I'm here, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Emily Sporrell in place of Jan Grice. Ah, uh, yes, present. Thank you. And Councillor Andrew Makinson. Yes, I'm here. I can hear you. Thank you. Independent person Anthony Boyle. Yes, I'm present. Can you hear me? Welcome, Anthony. Apologies of absence was received. Apologies have been received from Councillor Jan Grice. Is that agreed? I'll take that as a yes. Declarations of interest. Do we have any declarations of interest that need to be made? Microphones will be unmuted by the facilitated members provide with the opportunity to raise their declarations of interest. Has anybody got any declarations of interest? I'll take that as a no. There are no matters of urgency to be admitted onto the agenda and there are no exempt items requiring exclusion of the press or public. Item two, we need to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Could members now turn on their cameras by clicking on the start video in the bottom left hand corner of the screen? The meeting facilitator will now unmute everyone to provide you with an opportunity to raise any issues with regards to the minutes. If you wish to raise anything, please click to confirm you want your microphone to be unmuted and state your comments. There is no issues that are raised. The minutes will be taken as approved. Thank you. Please, you can all turn your cameras off again. Thank you. 
Item three. Anyone who has any questions or comments, please switch on their camera and raise your hand. I will now invite the officer to, to take questions on item three of the agenda today. Thanks, Chair. Um, this report covers the revenue and capital budgets, reserves, and the Treasury management updates for April to June 2020. The revenue position is covered in paragraph six to 13 on pages 15 to 18. Paragraph seven outlines the budget movements in the first quarter and all adjustments are self-balancing and do not impact on the approved net budget requirement that remains at 61.961 million. Paragraph nine on pages 16 to 17 reviews the robustness of the approved key assumptions. In particular, the 2.5% annual pay award assumption an offer of 2.75% for green box staff and 2% for firefighters has now been accepted and can, can be contained within the overall 2.5% budget assumption. The McLeod remedy assumption was that the cost to the employer of allowing firefighter pension, uh, members to reach, access their legacy schemes would be considered as part of the 2020 FPS actuarial review and reflected in the employer rates from 23-24. The Home Office has issued a guidance on the 21st of August 2020 informing fire and rescue authorities that members of the FPS facing immediate detriment, those individuals approaching retirement, should be given the option to choose between their old scheme and the 2015 scheme. This Home Office guidance also stipulated that any retrospective employer and employee contributions would have to be made good. If the service implemented this guidance, it may have significant financial implications over this and future years. However, it is now being confirmed that the Home Office guidance was an informal guide. And FRSs are now seeking clarification through the LGA FPS pensions lead with the Home Office on the guide and its status. Until that clarification is available, I understand that no FRS are acting on the HO guide. The authority is liable for any compensation payments awarded to any members of the relevant public pension schemes impacted by the McLeod decision. The amount of any compensation payment is not known at this point. In order to manage any risk from the McLeod case, the authority identified the smoothing reserve, currently £2 million, as an in-year source of funding if any McLeod assumptions did not hold true. The current view is that the smoothing reserve can cover any costs associated with McLeod and the remedy in 2021 but the future funding of such costs will be considered as part of the 2021 budget process. No unplanned growth was assumed in the budget. However, the spread of COVID-19 has created an unprecedented circumstances within which the authority has had to respond. The anticipated financial impact in 2021 is expected to be limited to the loss of commercial and other income, approximately half a million pounds, and additional expenditure on protective equipment, cleaning, ICT and other costs, approximately 0 0.9 million. To date, the government has awarded the authority 1.4 million to cover the impact of the virus. However, in addition, the government has now made available further funds to cover loss of fees and charges income, and the service will be making a grant claim to, come, to cover some of the anticipated half a million pound income loss. The current position is that the grant received to date should cover the loss of income and additional costs up to the end of 2021. At the September Strategy Day, the CFO advised members that the service is looking at the possibility of building a new training centre. The CFO and SLT will look to maximise in-year savings and are seeking members' approval to use any savings that materialise in the year to increase the capital reserve in order to contribute towards the cost of a potential new training centre build. 
It's no surprise, though, at this early stage in the year, the report has identified in paragraph 11 that revenue spend is anticipated to be consistent with the budget. Moving on to the capital position, paragraphs 14 to 15 outline the amendments to the approved capital programme of an increase of 3.762 million. And this increase relates to the approved rephasing of 2019-20 schemes into 2021. The only other change relates to the rephasing of spend from 2021 into future years. The reserve position is outlined in paragraph 16 and outlines a net contribution of 3.122 million to reserves in the quarter. This reflects the three and a half million pounds refund back to reserves as a result of the TD investment review and the planned drawdown of, three, of 0 0.378 million to fund the new St. Helens fire station build. Treasury management performance is outlined in paragraph 17 to 23 on pages 19 to 22. The performance of treasury management was consistent with the approved treasury management strategy for 2021 and paragraph 17 to 20, sorry, paragraphs 20 to 23 outlined the performance during the first quarter. At the end of June, the authority held 30.8 million pounds of investments and a breakdown of these is contained in the table after paragraph 21. All investments are consistent with the improved investment strategy and within the limits outlined in paragraph 21. No new loans have been taken out in the first quarter. And in summary, members are asked to note the report and approve the revenue and capital reserve adjustments outlined in the report and instruct the Treasury to continue to work with managers to maximise savings in 2021 and approve the use of any future additional savings in 2021 to increase the capital investment reserve in order to contribute towards the cost of a new TDA development. I'm happy to take any questions on the report here. Thank you. Uh, any members, any questions or comments? Emily. Thanks, Chair. Um, I, it all seems relatively uh, straightforward. I just wanted to ask around the moving of the um, any savings into the capital reserve for the academy development work. What would be the alternative? If you weren't doing that, where else would the money be going? Yeah. Yes, thanks. Um, what we've had a strategy in the past was always to put any savings into reserves to cover future potential financial challenges. What we did a couple of years ago, though, we changed that and said what we would try and do is use any savings in the year to pay additional MRP, additional debt repayments in advance of what we planned on the basis that, that would free up, hopefully, in future years, some of the MRP debt servicing budget to reinvest in the front line. So I suppose the options are you can either do uh, use the savings to um, fund additional spend in the year, put it in reserves to cover future uh, financial challenges. I think they're the basic two options that you've got. Is there a yeah, that's fine. Any other comments or questions from members? None have been indicated, Chair. Right, thank you. Can, can I just ask, this, the £2 million smoothing reserve for uh, the McLeod case, obviously this, was, this amount was agreed in the past uh, by the uh, authority. Uh, I'm just wondering, is, is £2 million going to be enough? Are you, are you I, yeah. that? And have you done any benchmarking with other uh, authorities to see how much they've got in those? smoothing results. Yeah, I suppose to answer the first point, two million pounds wouldn't be enough to cover the full cost of McLeod. Um, in terms of the compensation payments, what we've been told is that the employer would be responsible for those compensation payments. Now, what we don't know is how much. Is it going to be 100 pounds, 500 pounds for hurt feelings for each member, a times the number of members. So that, that could be a couple of hundred thousand. The big cost is going to be the the uh, implications on the employer rate and the home office the informal home office guidance note that came out has created a bit of confusion 
because originally what we had assumed would be that there's a 2020 actuary review for the fire pension scheme that would report the new employee rates for 23, 24. And when we've asked the question in the past, when we met with other treasurers and the LGA pensions rep, the direction we were given was that it would take quite a bit of time for the remedy to get its final approval and legislation. So the bottom line was to assume that that cost would be put into the, the pension account and that your new employer rates from 23, 24 would cover it. With that informal home office guide, it won't be available to people who've retired, but people who are coming to retirement, if they were given the right to access the legacy scheme with immediate effect, you may be talking tens of thousands per person in backdated employer contributions, times that by tens, if not hundreds of people, you can see that could be several hundred thousand. And then we still may face in 23, 24, an increase of one, two, three, four percent. Each one percent is, is worth about three or four hundred thousand. So you could see quite easily this could cost over the, over the period four, five, six million pounds. In terms of the second part of the question, when we've asked other fire services what they've done, some people have built in their medium term financial plan already that an increase in the employer rate and they've assumed two, three percent. Others have created reserves. It's a bit of a, a mismatch, but we seem to be fairly consistent with others in terms of the amount we've put uh, aside. The problem is it's constantly moving. You know, that home office informal guidance uh, is thrown sort of the, the, the cat amongst the pigeons. And we're all saying, what does it mean? So I'm confident that the two million smoothing reserve will cover the cost in 2021 of whatever decision is made. And I'll have to then take into account during the 21-22 budget process what the position is at that point. Thank you for that. Uh, just a, another quick one, really. Um, I noticed on uh, BBC television they're doing a, a documentary on technology and they're talking about um, firefighters being able to go with technology into the heat of a fire I was just wondering whether we in Merseyside are already doing this. Have we got this equipment or have we got some money set aside in the budget? Okay, that one's probably one for me, not necessarily for Ian. Um, however, I suppose I don't know exactly what the technology you're talking about, but we do have thermal image cameras which allow firefighters to, in effect, see in the dark or see in, in smoke-filled environments. Uh, and we have that and we have money allocated within the... The, the, the current budget to procure it in the first instance and then refresh it when it's required. So if it's kit and equipment like that, then absolutely we have the money um, already set aside to replenish that. If it's new and our know, technology, which is emergent, again, that would be a conversation that, you know, the, the team would have and I would have with Ian about identifying, you know, funds to be able to, procure it in the first instance and then sustain it over the period. And like anything else, some things over a period of time become uh, obsolete. So we stop purchasing those and we replace them with something which is more technologically advanced. So that's a, an ongoing process. So in effect, we look at uh, from, from fire engines and specialist capabilities right through to pieces of equipment um, and you know, and the pieces of equipment that we utilize day to day. If there's something which you know, emerges and is better, Sometimes it's more expensive. Sometimes it's less expensive, um, and we would continue to, to you know, to utilise the uh, the plants and equipment budget to be able to keep a, a breast of technology really. So, um, not knowing exactly what the piece of kit is, if it was, I say, if it was a thermal image camera, yes, we have them, and we absolutely uh, have a, a system of replenishing them when they become uh, obsolete. Thanks for that. Thanks. Very interesting. Merseyside leading the way again. <laughs> Um, any more questions or comments for anybody? No? no, none have been indicated. Right. So the next item is the date and time of the next meeting, which is the 11th of February 2021. Can't wait. <laughs> uh, I'll close the meeting now and thank you all for your contribution. Yes, confirm that members agreed to that agenda item three. No. Really sorry about that. Is it agreed we accept the recommendations? Agreed. Everybody agreed.
Right, thank you for your attendance. See you soon. Bye. Thank Bye you. all. Bye. Bye, everyone.